talk today about living with honor. The fifth commandment of the Ten Commandments tells us to live with honor. The Bible tells us here in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Honor is one of the greatest virtues we learn at home. The word honor means to respect, to value, to appreciate, and to hold someone in high esteem. The Medal of Honor is the highest military decoration awarded for exceptional acts of valor. Now, this commandment teaches us, first of all, that honor starts at home. We learn our virtues and develop our character first and foremost from our parents and our environment at home. We cannot overstate the importance of the family in the shaping of the life of a child that forms us into who we are called to be even as adults. It's not the school system, it's not the educational system, it's not the culture that's the primary molder of human character. It is the family in the home. That's why the enemy always attacks the family because the family is the foundation of a civil and just society. And here this virtue of honor that is so important to have in our lives, to show respect, to appreciate those who make an invaluable contribution on our lives, to hold in high esteem people in positions of authority. We learn the importance of honor and the virtue of honor is forged into our character when we grow up into a home that teaches us the value of honor. It's parents that instill in us. And so this commandment, honor your father and your mother, is based on the premise that moms and dads are living an honorable life themselves, that they have a culture of honor in their families. You know, a married couple that fights all the time or calls each other's names or uses poor language or demeans their children, if the parents don't show respect to others, if they don't respect authority, then there's no way their kids are going to learn the virtue of honor as well. So this commandment is not just to us as children, whether we're small kids or adult children. This commandment really starts with the parents first to create a culture of honor and respect in the home, and it is that culture, when kids grow up in it, they naturally see the value and the importance of honor. So this is a challenge, this commandment, for parents to raise their children right. There's a right way to raise kids and a wrong way to raise them. There's God's way and the way of the world. God's way works. Proverbs 22 and 7 says, train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when they are old, they'll not depart from it. The way they should go. The way is a crucial key truth presented all through the Bible. Even Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Wisdom is the way to live. And so the virtue of honor is instilled in children who are raising their children the right way. The way, the way of Christ the way of God's love and wisdom, the way that they should go. And the word should implies a moral imperative. There are things we should do and shouldn't do. And so honor is the natural result of parents raising their children the right way. Paul the Apostle quotes this commandment in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, that children should obey their parents in the Lord for the, this is right. It reminds us that this of the Ten Commandments is the first commandment in the Bible with a promise. But then he adds this to parents in Ephesians 6 and 4. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. It's not just fathers, but mothers, parents. Fathers and mothers, don't exasperate your children by legalistic rules or perfectionistic standards or harsh treatment, being overbearing. Instead, bring them up, nurture them like plants, grow them upward, always coming to a higher state of life. Bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. It is Christian teaching of our children. Reading the Bible with them. If you have small children, get a children's Bible with the pictures. I still have so many memories of my mom reading to me from the children's Bible. I still remember those pictures to this day. And I was looking at the picture more than I was hearing just the summation of a story. But that's a great way to begin to instill into your children when they're young. These great stories of the Bible that teach us the right way to live. 
And Paul the Apostle adds in Colossians chapter 3, verse 21, that fathers do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. And see, when parents are overbearing, then the kids get discouraged. So honor your father and your mother begins with parents creating an environment of honor by showing respect to each other, by showing respect to their children, by not allowing their children to be disrespectful, to draw the line and say, you're not going to say that, and to make sure that we correct disrespectful behavior. Because once they start going to school and they start meeting other friends and other families, they may not see the same Christian culture that you have at home. And so it's important. They're going to pick up words sometimes that'll shock you, and they'll act out sometimes and have an attitude. And it's important that when they do that, to draw the line and teach them that that's not an appropriate way to live. If it's not an appropriate way to live in their house, they'll learn later on that's not an appropriate way to live in the church, in the workplace, or anything. So this commandment is a challenge to parents, first of all, to show honor to each other in their marriage, to show honor to their children, to show honor to people and authority, and to create the culture. And then it's a challenge to children to honor, respect, and obey their parents. And Paul, the apostle, he builds on that in Ephesians 6 and 1. He says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And even as adult children, we should honor our parents. So many people have asked, well, what if I didn't have honorable parents? Or you only had one parent. Maybe one parent abandoned the other. You say, well, I didn't have the best of parents. Well, you can honor them for being your parent, first and foremost. They did bring you into the world. And I know that some of you have grown up in very difficult environments. It's not saying to show respect and honor people that were abusive, that type of harsh treatment of children. But it's saying, and I'll, that doesn't apply to most of us, but that does happen in certain situations. You can at least honor them in the sense that they are your parent, You may have to even have boundaries not associate with your biological parents. But I'm sure at some point in your life, God brought you spiritual parents. I've got several of those in my life as well. So you can find a way to show honor as well. You can also let go of the hurt and the anger in your heart. That's another way of honoring them and say, you know, they were, they were wrong. They were overbearing, but I forgive them now, you know, move on with your life. But this is an important virtue that we can teach our children, and that we all need to learn. So honor starts at home. Now, second of all, we learn in the Scripture that honor is a gift that we give to others. Now, when we learn the virtue of honor at home, we will naturally give that gift of honor to others. Disrespect is an all-time high in our culture, and social media has given a new platform to just unbridled, destructive, disrespectful speech. And the sad thing is that our children are learning this, and they think this is an appropriate way to to think and to talk. Think of how law enforcement has been maligned. Romans, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 7, clearly teaches us as Christians that we should honor those who are in law enforcement because they govern society so that it's not chaotic. And notice where there's a dishonor of the police and dishonor of authority. Notice the rise of violence in all these cities and states where politicians allow this, they feed it, they don't set boundaries, they allow that type of disrespect for authority. Look at the anarchy that results in a society when we don't show honor to one another, and especially honor to people in positions of authority. Now, Romans chapter 12, verse 10 tells us all as Christians that we should honor one another, that we should extend that gift of honor to each other as Christian brothers and sisters. We should treat every person with a level of honor and respect. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, Paul says that, that ministers in the church are worthy of honor. He says those whose work is preaching and teaching are worthy of double honor. We even see in our world today that ministers are treated with disrespect sometimes in this country. That there's a lack of honor of God and the things of God and the house of God and even the ministers of Christ at times. And we are taught to honor those in pastoral ministry, especially those who bring us the word of God and who teach us the way. I thank God for the the great pastors I've had growing up in my life, what amazing impact they made on my life. And not just the pastor of the church, but but youth ministers as well that made a huge impact. And I know you feel the same way. And we should honor those in ministry. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4 says that marriage should be honored by all. Look how our culture has completely dishonored marriage. 
Marriage is a sacred relationship between one man and one woman in a covenant relationship. That's God's ideal. That's the perfect standard. Of course, the world comes along and just tramples that underfoot and treats it like it's nothing. And there's a lower view of marriage today. There's been so many divorces and collateral damage. People are afraid of marriage. But if God blesses you with marriage, treasure each other, value one another, honor each other, and honor your marriage as a sacred gift of God to you. Marriage should be honored by all. And the marriage bed kept purity rights. But the sexually immoral God will judge. There are consequences of that type of sexual immorality. This shows no, no regard or no respect for the sacredness of marriage. So we see that honor starts at home in this commandment by parents creating a culture of honor. Honor also means that children learn to obey their parents, especially when they're minors, when they're under their parents' authority. When we become adults, we're free to make our own decisions. But when we are living under the authority of our parents at home, God commands us to obey them, to honor them and to respect them. And that cultivates character within us. So honor starts at home and honor is a gift that we give to others to show respect, to show honor and appreciation for brothers and sisters in Christ, to show it in our marriage, to show it to those who serve us in the Lord. And the Bible teaches us that honor belongs to God. This is the, the highest standard of honor. It's when we honor the Lord. And the Bible teaches us in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. God says, I will honor those who honor me. And Proverbs 3 and 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 tells us to honor God with our bodies. Proverbs 14, 34 says that those who are kind to the poor honor God. And the greatest purpose of life is to bring honor and glory to God. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That becomes the ultimate virtue of life, the ultimate purpose of life, to say, I'm going to do everything in my life to the best of my ability to bring honor to God as my creator, as my father, to bring honor to Jesus as Lord of my life, to bring honor to the Holy Spirit who lives within me and empowers me and helps me and comforts me. And finally, the Bible tells us that honor brings great blessings. Now here, the commandment says, honor your father and your mother so that, here's the result, here's the blessing, here's the promise, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Now, the blessing of long life is found quite often in the Scripture, especially in the Old Testament. You read so many promises of long life. Now, the blessing of long life, when he says live long in the land, doesn't refer to an individual lifespan. You know, David said in Psalm 31 and 15, my times are in your hands. And so people say, well, that means I'm going to live to be 100. Not necessarily. The, the phrase long life does not speak to the lifespan as much as it speaks to living a life of significance and success and blessing. It's more about the quality of life than it is the quantity of years, because we all know that our time on this earth is limited. God's made us as an eternal soul in a temporary body. And when our time on this earth is over, we know that we have the promise of eternal life. So long life does not mean a certain amount of years. It speaks of a blessed life, a quality life. And this promise is also plural when he says, the Lord your God is giving you. He was also speaking to the nation of Israel who when they received these commandments were preparing to go into the promised land. And he says that you obey God and you honor God and you have the gift of honor and the virtue of honor in your life. You as a people, he said, as a nation are going to live long in the land of Israel. Now remember, they later went into captivity again. They came out of Egypt, got in the promised land, were there for hundreds of years and then later... Right before the New Testament period, we see the northern kingdom and then the southern kingdom go into idolatry. They were attacked by foreign powers and the southern capital of Judah, Jerusalem, was carried off into captivity in Babylon for 70 years. And they didn't live long in the land then because they, were idol they dishonored God. They dishonored each other. Malachi the prophet talks about how they dishonored the covenant of marriage. And then God brought them back from Babylon back in their land. So this commandment that Moses was given by the Lord it was also a national commandment that there are blessings to a nation of honor. What an important prophetic word that is for us today in this country that has it in our roots 
faith in Christ, biblical teaching. America's history is, is a mixture of good and bad like any nation. Great sins of the past and even great sins of the present. But yet within America, like many nations, there's that seed of the gospel. In God, we trust on our currency. There's an honor of God. And the further we get away from honoring God as a nation, notice that things seem to get worse in our nation, that we as a nation need to return to God so that we can live long in the land the Lord God has given us so that we can enjoy a good life. This commandment is so rich in application in so many ways. And I pray today that you found a, a point to apply it to your life as well. Honor starts at home. Honor is to be given to others as well. Honor brings great blessings from the Lord. And the greatest honor we give is honor and praise to God. So join me today and let's offer praise to God for his blessings. Lord, today, thank you for your grace in our lives. Your grace is amazing and abundant, provides everything that we need. We thank you, Father, that you love us with an everlasting love. And Lord, today, as we ponder your word and take it to heart, it is our deepest desire to bring honor and glory to you. So we pray today the words of the psalmist, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Thank you for joining me today for this time of studying the word of God. And I want to ask you to make sure that you encourage your family and friends to subscribe. Let's get as many people as we can sharing the Word of God together each week as we dig deep. Go on the Mount Perrin website today. Get the app if you don't have it. Check out all the new ministries that are coming this season in the life of our church to bless you and your family. I want to thank you for your gracious and faithful support of the Mount Perrin Ministries and our outreach around the world. And I look forward to seeing you and your family for worship this Sunday on campus or online. God bless you. Have a great day.